mistake. We are trying to. And we've seen the disaster. amount of deaths that have happened to natural disasters mm -hmm. in the last five to mm -hmm. ten years. Absolutely. We should have known that. We should have predicted. We should have designed buildings design to, to withstand those. I think we have uh, fairly addressed the first question of setting the expectations right. What all to expect in the en engineering spectrum? There are enough jobs for n number of engineering uh, engineers which are being produced. It is just keeping the vision right and keeping the mission right. So we move on to the next larger classic question like whether education catapults industry or whether en uh, industry attracts <laughs> the education. Now it's a chicken egg kind of a question. No, not, so uh, this <laughs> is, I will tell you the same. This question is so because uh, this question the, 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 the larger the sure. larger discourse over here has become like because there are not so many jobs like when the industry was harping the IT tone all the IT leaders coming and talking so everyone started having computer science and engineering and so and so forth. So there is a gap of a strong regulator which has all the data. For example, there is a fantastic report of the National Skills Development Corporation yes. which has projected the kind of manpower, skilled manpower at various levels uh, till 2022. Now we have the AICT databases which say that uh, in which district of the country what all engineering seats are available. No agency so far in this country has mapped this uh, uh, data so far, probably for the first time as Engineering Watch in our next issue, we would be uh, extracting and mining it and presenting it across to our readers. Uh, apart from that, the sentiment, because uh, the, the kind of engineering growth which has happened in the country in the last 10 years, in UP alone we had 46 engineering colleges in the year 2000 and today we have close to 750. So everyone thinks that industry is probably the driver, it's on the driving seat. <laughs> but all across the globe, it's probably <laughs> no, the academia no. which has been... No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. I, I think if I may, look, look, let us be clear on a couple of things, okay? No one should be as arrogant to say that they know what is good for everybody in this country. Sir. We've gone past those days where you had a five-year plan, these many engineering seats we need, this is the only number of engineers the country needs, we need 10 of these, 10 of these, because that is ultimately completely fake. Market forces describe supply and demand and they are the ones who are going to set what jobs are available in what different things. However, uh, there are two parts of this question. What does industry actually want? Mm -hmm. And why are there so many engineering colleges that have opened up? Mm -hmm. I'll be very blank with you. Most of the large spurt in engineering colleges have come. I'll give you a simple story. Here to Haridwar, you go, about 50 to 60 random colleges have opened up things. I sat and talked to a person, sir, you know, you have been in education for 45, 60 years, can you give us some tips? I said, sir, why did you open an engineering college? He said, yes, sir, we had uh, agriculture land. Getting it to convert it to commercial would have costed too much money and too much time. So we converted to an education, we put up an engineering college, at least the mortgage will be paid. Hopefully in five years we will, we will make a five star hotel, in five years we will convert to uh, to commercial and then we will just we will construct a room and all. So we have a huge number of people who suddenly entered this mm -hmm. field as a business without really understanding the first thing about what education is and what India wants. So they look. That's a very pertinent point. And, and most of them, they get two or three good faculty members, website for so and so, so and so, so, so and so. Should we shut the, these colleges down? No, 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 no absolutely. No. Approach, Look, yeah. For me, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Like, so, uh, sorry, uh, for, for, me, uh, for me, it's like a very simple, like, you know, it's about a consumer, mm -hmm. right? I don't mind if an engineering college, you say what you want. ISB today is illegal. The Indian School of Business, one of our top ranked business school, is illegally running. Nobody shutting them down. Okay, let me be frank with you on that. The enforcement ability of our regulatory agencies is absolutely negligible. What I do want, however, is transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. If you as an engineering institution make a claim, you should be accountable in a court of law, in a consumer court for the claims you have made. <coughs> Correct. If you say, I am this person, I have this faculty, I have this is my thing, then it's the consumer's fault for picking the wrong en engineering institution. But if you're making all sorts of fancy claims which you cannot back up with real data, this is one problem. On the industry side, industry really doesn't care. All they want is to wake up in the morning. I think this is a very pertinent question that Aditya has uh, raised out that industry really doesn't care. They, <laughs> they want to wake up in the morning, I have five vacancies, call my... A, uh, HR guy, HR puts the resumes on, they in interview 300 people, suddenly they come and whine, oh my god we can't find anybody qualified. Because you see it takes almost 4 years to go from 0 to 100 to create somebody at the undergraduate mm -hmm. level for a master's or PhD level. Which is why I love what sir is saying and this is exactly the way our systems have to be, that we need to create people who have an intrinsic love of learning, 
who have a strong grasp of engineering fundamentals, who have a strong grasp of intellectual fundamentals. The entire notion of the Renaissance man, somebody who is able to apply themselves to a wide variety of fields has been completely lost. And that's what industry today needs, is people who have enough specialized skills to get the fundamentals, mm -hmm. but then tomorrow you wake up in the morning and say, look, guess what, we don't need your job anymore. Mm -hmm. We need to do this. Say, okay, mm -hmm. give me three months, mm -hmm. I'll retrain myself. So how do you propose to take this mandate further, like uh, what Abhi has told no, I would like to come back to you. The question that you asked Sir. is that education, academics driving the industry or yeah. industry driving the academics? Sir. I think this is a, a, I mean, a story I would like to narrate. Before steam engine was invented, yes. coal was a piece of stone. <laughs> Before the electronic chip was invented, mm -hmm. sand was available at every show. Mm -hmm. Before the kind of technology is reigning in, it converts matter, mm -hmm. it converts energy, mm -hmm. it converts something mm -hmm. into what is used by man. Mm -hmm. So if you have the capacity, mm -hmm. you have the understanding, the academics, you know, I sometimes normally say that U.S. is the highest indebted country in the world, mm -hmm. and still it is the driving force in technology, in engineering, in research. That is the greatest capability. If, if U.S. is surviving today, it's only because of its academics. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Nothing else survives. In, survives if you are academics. So that is what India has to understand. That until uh, unless we enrich our academic institutions. We make them excellent. We devote ourselves wholeheartedly to an excellence in education, irrespective of whether I'm not only for engineering. I'm talking no, in terms of every everybody. Area. And we have started destroying our schools. Mm -hmm. I would like to build right from primary schools. Mm -hmm. We have tried to destroy education mm -hmm. through schooling, mm -hmm. which has tried to talk only in terms of rote learning, and we have tried to talk in terms of only those particular things which are going to come in the exam. So it's a totally exam oriented, not knowledge. So the wording is properly clear, academics drives the industry and academic drives but the nation. Will drive the nation, will, will drive, drive the growth, will drive the survival of human being, if survival properly. of human race on this planet. Mm -hmm. That is what I want to say. It's only academics, it's only intellectual development. That is what differentiates mm -hmm. human being from other animals mm -hmm. on the planet. I think I, I would only yeah, add a little sir, bit more sir. on this that today's academy, what you said, uh, in addition to rote learning, we need to also leverage the knowledge of this uh, subcontinent, yes. the ancient knowledge, yes. and duly integrate it yes. without having any fear of favor, favor for any sect, religion, or anything. That's because that, uh, even Einstein has acknowledged that. That's because uh, there are too many things. One is lack of spiritual strength in people who are at the senior level, they may be engineers. The second is, the lack of financial knowledge to the project managers who need to de deliver yeah, projects. They can't make a budget, they yeah. can't track systems. So, so those are the two things, two elements which I also would like to say that should be duly integrated in any future curriculum. Yes, it is most important to have, well, I mean somebody very rightly said, Wall Street had the enormous and the thing of Harvard, Stanford and all the best management uh, graduates that they yes. would hire, they were there and still those companies went past. Yes. Why? Because of one question, ethics. Mm -hmm. Until yes. unless you have ethical practices, you will m m go down, there is no way that you can survive. Yes. I so I it all catches up to you. Yeah. It all catches I up think to you. that's where setting the rightful expectations is very, very, very important. And towards the end of this special episode, I would uh, uh, go towards an action plan, tangible action plan, because Engineering Watch doesn't believe in mere words. It believes in taking the words to rigorous action. So the three core points which have been